uh, I have made a pact with Jennifer that as soon as my beard goes white, I'm going to be uh, Santa. In what ways? Well, well, the idea is I'm going to dress like him, kind of, right? Okay. I'll, I'll have, like, red clothes that I put on and wear everywhere. The glasses, the little readers that I have. I'll have the white beard. I'll have the white hair. I'm not going to ask children to sit on my lap, but I am going to have, like, a little workshop that I disappear into every once in a while. <laughs> Your Santa cave. And I'm gonna I'm gonna laugh like ho, 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 like that. Maybe have a reindeer that just shows up every once in a while, or put l- some little horns on Edward. Oh yeah, hey, wait a second. Maybe I'll just be the Grinch. That'd be easier. Actually, would it? No, uh, harder probably. You have to get a fursuit of some kind. It's easy to be the villain. It's hard to be the hero. Do you consider Santa the hero, even though he watches you when you're sleeping? Yeah, yeah. He sees you when you're sleeping, and he knows when you're... Okay, so now that's something. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. So two different senses, right? I, it almost seems like being awake is... Uh, it's it's more of a, a sort of telepathy. I, I imagine Santa's outside... Maybe on the roof, and he's got his eyes closed, and he's having a, a vision of the child in the bed. And as soon as the child wakes up, boom, Santa can't see him anymore. And that's how he knows that you're awake. He knows when you're, you've been bad or good. So the knowledge of bad and good, I would say if they're asleep, he sees them. And that child that he sees, he knows if they've been bad or good. Now... He also can hone in on good children and bad children. And if he thinks of a bad child, but can't see the bad child, then he knows that the child is bad and awake. Doing bad things, presumably. Uh, Presumably. Uh, But but, uh, I think Santa's very Judeo-Christian in this way, that that a bad child who's... Oh, boy. Ooh, I want to say no. Wait a second. Santa's a little bit more forgiving than, uh, you know, the Old Testament God, anyway. In that, if you do a bad thing, but you're generally a good child, I don't think you're on the naughty list, necessarily. Right. You have some leeway when it comes to Santa. Let's go back now. Uh, You better watch out. Watching out is first. That sounds like a threat. (laughs) Look out. Here comes Santa. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. So Santa... Hates crybabies? Hates... Yeah. uh, We're honing in on a Santa that doesn't like negative emotions. What about... What about... Better not cry. I mean, what if you cry for good reasons? Mm, Like you cry out of happiness. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I guess we're singing this to a a bad child? The whole thing is a morality tale meant to scare children into being good. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. So so he's coming, and you can't hide from him. Actually, here's the thing. You can hide. You got to stay awake, or Santa's going to see you. That's that's something that I hadn't thought of. But yeah, yeah, kids drinking coffee so that they can stay (laughs) under Santa's radar. So Santa's basically Freddy Krueger. Yeah, well... Uh, Or at least, you know, uh, some sort of a Wes Craven knockoff, if nothing else. 